I'm convening the regular uh, City Commission meeting of October 5th, 2011. Have the roll call, please. Commissioner Roth? Here. Commissioner Smith? Here. Commissioner Nasida? Here. Commissioner Mom? Here. Mayor Neely? Here. Can you please all join me in the flag, sir? I have a, I have here a proclamation that I'll be reading here. Uh, it's on the open days of culture. Whereas culture draws us together in common purpose, understanding and celebration, and whereas Oregon's 1,300 arts, heritage, and humanities nonprofits, museums, libraries, theaters, historical societies, art centers, and heritage sites are the heart of our communities, and whereas the Oregon Cultural Trust presents Oregon Days of Culture, October 1 through 8th during National Arts and Humanities Month, to encourage Oregonians to celebrate, participate, and give to Oregon culture, and whereas October 8, 2011, marks the ninth anniversary of Oregon's innovative cultural tax credit, encouraging new public and private investment in Oregon culture, and whereas the Oregon Culture Trust is smart public policy, like vote by mail, the bottle, and beach bills that makes Oregon a proud thought leader nationwide, and whereas supporting culture by giving to cultural nonprofits and to cultural trust is vital to preserving the past, sustaining the present, and creating the future, I therefore, Doug Neely, Mayor of Oregon City, do proclaim belatedly October 1st through 8th, 2011, to be Oregon Days of Culture and call upon all Oregons, especially during these eight days, to participate in Oregon culture, to celebrate its vibrancy and death, and to give to the arts, heritage, and humanities to ensure their further vitality. In witness thereof, I have hereunto set my hand on this fifth day of October 2011. I'm not quite sure if I had seen it ahead of time, the uh, or noticed ahead of time that they're proclaiming uh, the vote by mail was a great thing. I may not have read that proclamation, <laughs> but uh, I was too late on it. Does that mean we have to go live it up for the next few days? <laughs> you really You're right. You do have some time. Okay. Make up for it. Okay. Thank you. Uh, the next thing is a period for citizens' comment, and I need to take a little time with this one. This portion of the agenda allows citizens up to three minutes to present information relevant to the city not related to items on the agenda. If you have a code complaints, city service complaints, or traffic ticket issues, please contact the appropriate city department first to resolve your issue. As a general practice, the city commission does not engage in discussion with those making comments. Prior to speaking, citizens should fill out a comment card available in the back of the chambers and add it to our city recorder, Nancy Ide. Begin, when you're called up, begin speaking uh, by saying your name and your residing city. Do we have any? We have William Gifford. You want to come <laughs> forward? Thank you, Mr. Mayor, City Commissioners. My name is William Gifford, and I live in Oregon City. And I just, uh, I, I, uh, I, a quick report and a, and a question about uh, yesterday. I was fortunate to attend one of the two presentations on the economics of heritage that was, uh, that was put on then at the Museum of the Oregon Territories. And I was so impressed. So many great points were brought up. Uh, a lot of questions were raised as well as, uh, as, well as other information given. But, um, and I noticed that Willamette Falls uh, uh, Media Center was recording that. And what I don't know is, is that going to be available anywhere? And where would that be available I don't know if uh, I know that the uh, the, the uh, organization WFHeritage.org uh, has a website. I don't know if they're going to be putting that video on that website. Does anybody know about that? Yeah. 
I, I know that they recorded the morning session. I went to the morning session. I don't know about the evening session. Yeah. It sounded like they were going to put the the slideshow or the presentation on. They talked about just mm -hmm. they talked about getting that out, but I don't know if that was going to be available on the city's website or not. But uh, when it becomes available, well, we, could, we could explore it. Of course, it was an our event, but we could explore it. We can talk to Willamette Falls and see what exactly what. Thanks very much. Any other citizens' comment? <clears throat> With that, um, <clears throat> the adoption of the agenda, we had some items that are were jointly on the Urban Renewal Commission's docket and ours docket uh, agenda <laughs> and ours. Uh, <laughs> we, we, got, we get a feeling some of are acting like a court. But in any <laughs> case, I'm going to suggest that those two be removed and, and dis discussed at the next meeting after we've had our our potential ex executive session and I'm sure I'm wondering just as we did on the urban renewal commission because we can't anticipate the way the discussion is going to go have an executive session and an open session before city commission as well yes we don't know that we, well it'll be necessary but just right. for, uh, to cover our bases that's yeah. probably the best way to go so um, so the uh, the nine B and C. Yeah, what is it? Nine B and C. Nine B and C. We're going to poll now. I uh, I believe somebody wanted to speak to one of those, and I think simply because that's the case, I'm going to have that person come forward. Uh, Mr. Mayor, I indicated on my form that if it were postponed, I would withdraw my request. Oh, okay. Okay. Fine. Uh, so we'll expect you to return. Okay. Um, with that. Uh, we'll go on to uh, reports. Uh, the oh yeah, well, that's the adoption of the agenda. Was there anything that anybody want pulled off the consent? Mm -mm. All right. With that, we're going to go on to report on code enforcement issued at 5:15. I guess we're not. Uh, do you want to? Uh, the city manager. Do you want to comment on that? Um, well, Mayor, uh, you have two two items here, and I was I was not here at the last meeting, but. I did have a chance to review the meeting uh, on video. Um, ordinarily, these code enforcement re these are staff reports, and so we're we're not going to be debating with the applicants, or we don't have subpoena power. This isn't a courtroom, so we're not going to be trying the cases. We're simply going to make staff reports to the commission. In the first instance, uh, Mr. Conkle will report to you that essentially give you more details about the fact that they're working with the complain it about this. There hasn't been a citation issued to, to date. The second one is a very different case in that it does have citations that have been issued. And um, so you probably want to think about the fairness also to the whoever the original person was that complained, because they're not they're not here either. We have court municipal court for that. It's specifically set out in your charter that that's where those cases are supposed to be resolved. So what we have tonight is simply a courtesy report back to the commission. It's pretty substantial. This is the only part of that record. Um, I emailed all of you copies of this earlier, and the Public Works Director and Code Enforcement is here, as well as the Chief, to talk about that second issue. And if citizens did want to talk about that, my suggestion would be that they do that under the three minutes, so that we're not, because we're not going to be debating the, the, the merits, merits of their cases with them. Okay. Evening Commission. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, at our last meeting, uh, uh, Ms. Ms. Jenea came in and, uh, during public t uh, comment, uh, explained her situation that currently at 515 Fourth Avenue concerning a temporary structure, a membrane structure that's uh, in front of her home in Kanema, uh, located in the right of way. Um, we've been working with uh, Ms. Ms. Jenea since that original code enforcement notification went out. Um, she's worked with us. She stayed in contact with us. Um, we explored options that we had at the staff level. Uh, we took her request and concerns to the Planning Commission, um, where she also uh, attended, uh, gave her testimony. We brought back to the Commission a presentation on the membrane structure code that they just that was recently adopted by the Commission and put into effect, and it became effective on January 1st of 2011. There was no grandfather provision in that code. Um, the Planning Commission reviewed the information. Uh, this has been something that they've been discussing for multiple, multiple years. Uh, they felt that the clear and objective standards that are in the code are appropriate and necessary, and they did not recommend 
uh, taking further action to rewrite the legislation. Um, at that point, um, we continued to work with Ms. Jenea. She came, we recommended that she come to the City Commission. Um, she requested a one-year extension. Um, based on the work that we have done at the Planning Commission, at the Planning Commission, what we went through to adopt this code language to the legislative process, uh, we're not recommending that, that you do that. But I will let you know that we do understand her concerns, her safety concerns over the winter. Um, we are, um, I've, I've spoken with Ms. Ms. Jenea, um, and we, we are going to document a, a process to get into compliance that is acceptable to both her in addressing her safety concerns and ours in addressing the non-conforming issue. Um, if you have any questions, I'd be happy to answer them. Um, not, none. I guess, I guess the non-grandfather things into a document concern me a little bit. Um, and I know it's, a it's intended to be a temporary structure, I, I presume, usually, but um, um, how, are, how do people, how are people aware of it until, in fact, they get, uh, they get somebody spots it and makes a complaint? I mean, I presume that's the usual process by which it happens. Yeah. Uh, we've, we've tried to provide some public output, public outreach. Um, I believe it's been, um, it was either just placed in or it will be going into the water bills. Um, we've tried to document it uh, and we went through the process. Uh, we've notified the Citizen Advisory Committee that these changes were coming to try and get the word out. Um, it's certainly something we've talked about with the Planning Commission is to try and increase our public awareness, public outreach, uh, especially on issues like this where something is being put in and there is no grandfather clause into it. So we are trying to reach out to the community and we will continue to do so to get that word out. Anybody wish to speak to this at this time? I mean, you're, 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 you're satisfied with the discussions you're having at this point, is that correct? Okay. Okay. Well, thank you very much. Okay? That's uh, all that I have. I'm just going to go ahead. I'm, I'm just wondering if we're going to have that kind of thing for the next item, because there's a citation. I'm not going to have my staff debating with the applicant well, whether right. or not... <laughs> Yeah, I, I th here, here's the situation as, as I understand it. Uh, there was a citation. There was a request for a court appearance. The person never turned up. Is that correct? Yes. Uh, I, I don't think we want to put ourselves in before a judicial uh, uh, decision no. has mm -hmm. been made. I think I, 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 I don't. We're not. We're not supposed to be a jury in the. I mean, we're not supposed to be a, a municipal judge in this kind of operation. And uh, well, I mean, we've had. I think we've had some things come up before that were similar in nature. And mm -hmm. I think we should make it clear among ourselves if somebody has had a citation, they've, they've gone into the court, a decision has been made. Do we, or they haven't or decided not even to go to the court, do we want to end up as an appeals court? And I don't think that's a position we want to put ourselves in. Uh, any, and I'm just going to query it with five of our, our attorney, if there's a decision made in the municipal court that the, that the person's not satisfied with, they can appeal through, through a process. It, Is that correct? That's correct. They can take it to circuit court where yeah. they can have a, a, a new hearing essentially at, at circuit court. And I'm pretty sure our charter doesn't say that we can be appeal courts, so I, I think it's something that we, we have to agree that we, right. we're not going to be involved in. Right. I agree. I, I would agree. And, the you know, to further highlight this, I mean, it's entirely appropriate for a citizen to petition the local government at the commission level or through my office or any other if they want to change a law in general applicability. But once you become a litigant and you you know the commission is not in a position under your charter to give individual adjudications for these individual cases uh, and I think it's even more aggravated whenever the person simply refused to appear in municipal court it's just not uh, it's not again there you go Okay, I'm going to give you. Th I'm going to give you three minutes to come up and formally speak. 
Be sure to introduce yourself. We we'll want you to fill out the card and give it to her, but introduce okay. yourself. Thank you for having, allowing me to speak. Um, even though my name is Mark Matheson, I live at 855 Malala Avenue, and it was not a matter of, of uh, not showing up. I was in South Dakota working. What it says. Excuse me? Go ahead. No, you go take your three minutes. Well, sure. Um, the, point, the point being is I was working. I am in disaster deployment. We do not have the luxury of delaying things. And when they, this came up, it was in direct conflict. I was ordered, I would had a deployment order for Friday. I left on Monday, Monday, 1201. Had no opportunity to call, had no opportunity. I was on the road. Had to drive 1,200 miles and had to do it in 22 hours. So therefore, that's my reasoning. Unfortunately, <coughs> unlike the first citation, I didn't have, I didn't have the luxury that the, the, the person before. I tried to call the city. I've tried to call the city manager and say, look, we need to hold off. We need to hold off on this. It was not, it was not accepted. I did not choose to put this in litigation. litigation. I have, through since 2002, I have maintained my position that I understand the situation, but I, you have, the city had to understand my situation. And therefore, that's why we're here. So to quietly sit down and not being allowed to make a case for which, um, which I think is wrong in the first place. And the fact is, this thing would have never gone into litigation if, t if cooler heads would have prevailed. That's my, that's my argument. Well, I guess, I, I mean, right now you've got fines on you, and I guess that's one of your concerns. I sent you an email uh, and rec recommending you see the city, this city manager, not the one that was, in, not, not the one that was there right, probably in the court when the citation was issued, and you said you're going to refuse to speak to the city manager. That was your email response. Uh, my, my, my direction to you would be to speak to our city manager. In, in terms of fines and anything of that nature. Mayor, if you want our step, Again, see, here we are. This point. is. <laughs> Excuse me, to that, to that point, my refusal was after he accused me of stealing. So to be, to because of the hostile environment, you can't ask, ask a person to again go forth in front of the city manager after he said, accuse me of double dipping and doing something felonious. That's not reasonable. That's where the cooler he heads did not prevail. I tried to make my case. I tried to work with the city. It's a simple thing. Parks and Recs comes, drops the trees. I take care of the wood. We're done. But no, it was more or less accusing me of doing something wrong. Thank you. Mayor. I'd suggest this is in litigation. Yeah. Let's yes. let the court sort it out yes. and, and move forward. Yes. That. You know, I think last commission meeting we got record time. We are on our consent agenda. <laughs> <laughs> How is that possible? I, I don't know. <laughs> so, Mayor, uh, may I excuse the um, the staff from code enforcement that came for the pseudo trial? Uh, yes. You okay. May. Thank you. <clears throat> Appreciate you taking the time. Thank you, Nancy. You. I do take exception of the, the attorney calling that pseudo trial. Uh, well, I don't think the attorney said that. Uh, that's our city manager. He's not our attorney. Uh, anyway. Good. Thank you, Nancy. The, um, did, did you say two? I don't think you did. Anyway. <laughs> there you had a change of voice. Uh, um, uh, motion to adopt the uh, consent agenda. I'll move to adopt the consent agenda minus we'll items. On. Yeah, items. Minus, minus items B. And C, which have been withdrawn. Yeah. Second. Sec Sorry. <laughs> Roll call. Commissioner Roth? <laughs> yes. Aye. Commissioner Smith? Aye. Commissioner Nasita? Aye. Commissioner Rum? Aye. Mayor Neely? Aye. As wow. unanimously. Communications, uh, City Manager. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, does staff, any, any of you have, I think, Nancy, you had something you wanted to speak on? Uh, yes, the um, we received uh, the mayor received a notification this week that um, Secretary LaHood, the trans uh, Federal Highways uh, Transportation Director, 
has awarded ODOT a lot of money to um, <clears throat> continue doing improvements to the Portland Amtrak station. They've also awarded money so that along with Portland's match, I believe they have $10 million to complete an environmental assessment, and um, which is great because that will allow the state to move forward on studying the options for um, rapid transit in rapid rail, rapid passenger rail in um, the state of Oregon. And it's important for Oregon City because this allows us to formally come to the conclusions we wish to come to regarding where we believe Amtrak should be and what alternatives we would support. So I'm, what I'm excited about is, A, um, passenger rail is, in my opinion, very extremely important for the West Coast and to maintain it, and also to look at options that will sustain it into the future and how to make it operate as best as possible. So I would encourage the Commission to um, talk about how you want to organize um, your thoughts and assign members to be actively involved in the process. There's been, I mean, we've had public comments on different routing possibilities and included, I think, two, two existing rail lines. And uh, it, it, might, it might be beneficial for us to review those at one point. Uh, I think it will be important to participate in, they will be doing a full-blown analysis and we don't we want to be at the table and so it could be that it's important to um, maybe talk to the Oregon Transportation Commission or the Clackamas County and determine what representation Clackamas County wants to have on whatever committee they um, put together to look at the to look at the issues I think Nancy's right on this because sometimes in these kind of meetings there, there's almost a interpretation of the expression of interest by how many elected officials from a particular community show up or, or keep showing up on an issue and it does seem to make a difference in the amount of weight that they give it and uh, it's almost ironic that we sent that letter to we sent a letter to Amtrak and they must have crossed in the mail because like three days later we got this one mm -hmm. and I was going to email you but I didn't want to confuse the issue and say, look how fast they responded to our letter. <laughs> <laughs> and um, to, be, to be frank with you, too, you'll be at the table or, or someone who you believe can be your um, repre representative. Um, also to hear what other people are saying. I mean, you really do want to not go in with blinders. I mean, I think it's important to listen to all the issues and make informed decisions. But it's important for this community to be at the table. So we will, if it's, if it's okay with the commission, I'll have Nancy email you a schedule of as many of these meetings as we know about, as far out as we know about them. Okay. And so that any time you want to attend, let us. I have a question, and this is not to start rumors. It's just really for my clarification. Um, talking about all this money that's coming in <clears throat> on development of, of high-speed rail and everything, but didn't, didn't we get something from either Union Pacific or Amtrak about stopping the stop here? Uh, that's also from the federal government. <laughs> yeah. That was actually, I think that was coming out of the House of Representatives. And those two seem to be counterproductive. Well, they, they one is <laughs> right. One's, one's, one's out of the department, the other's out of Congress. Okay, uh, okay that explains it all. Never mind. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, uh, Chair Lahan and I sent a joint letter to uh, Kurt, well, to all our representatives actually on that particular issue. I was called by uh, Representative uh, Kurt Schrader to get uh, further clarification. Uh, my understanding was coming out of one partisan block in terms of the recommendations of where bu uh, budget, budget cuts, cuts uh, should occur. And uh, I think it was intended to be a uh, uh, conversation between. Uh, Commissioner Lehan, myself, and Kurt Schrader, but apparently she couldn't link up at the time. But uh, so uh, uh, we we sent that letter to all our uh, all our representatives, Senate and House. Okay, thank you. Yeah, I look at a short term, long term. Mm -hmm. I mean, short term, they're looking for budget cuts. Long term, I think Federal Highways and the administration, and probably Congress, recognizes the need for passenger rail through on the West Coast corridor. Yeah. I just have that, one. Just to make clear that that had to do with uh, federal support for the 
state supported rail lines which the state doesn't completely cover and that that was the cascade uh what's it called cascade oh your 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 train jim your train, your train. <laughs> coast star line it's not, it's not the coast, coast, star, not the coast, coast star, star line yeah it was the cascade hmm? i didn't know it was his train oh yeah yeah it was his train <laughs> <laughs> the j train yeah. <laughs> anyway um, Okay, Mayor, I just have a couple more little things. Uh, last week, uh, Commissioners Sita, Mom, and Roth and I all went to the League of Oregon Cities Conference. Uh, my take on the conference is that we all came away with some good ideas, and it was a good learning experience. There was a, a little bit stronger turnout than I think we've seen maybe in past years, and that could be because um, the, f the conferences that are on the national or international scale are less appealing during the recession when people are trying to cut back. And when you find a conference you can actually drive to in your car, it's, a, it's an opportunity. And I think that might be why we had a strong attendance. Um, at the, while I was at the conference, I had a, t a chance to meet with individual commissioners, too. And um, a couple of you suggested to me a, a, a waterborne tour of the Willamette Falls slash Blue Heron area. Um, and waterborne, one of you were more specific. You said kayak. <laughs> and so we were, <laughs> we were thinking about that today, and we, uh, we actually acted on all these things that all of us talked about. I think each of you have had some communication from me right away about whatever it was that we talked about. Um, but, but we looked into that a little bit, and we're, we fear for your safety. Um, <laughs> we took a little bit closer look at the currents even now when the flows are low and so what we're what we're thinking about doing is asking you whether or not you might prefer a boat and I almost <laughs> have to I almost ha hate to say that with Commissioner Sita's past experience on motorized vessels <laughs> <laughs> on the <old> <laughs> but, but with life jacket and maybe hand, you can have two boats yeah <laughs> <laughs> his, his experience might be valuable to us. So. <laughs> I went on a Willamette jet boat I'm right, right up to the falls and right up to the, um, the chute, the fish passage chute, mm -hmm. and we, we didn't get hung up. Do you remember <laughs> what time? <laughs> we didn't flip over. Okay. Do you remember what time of year that was? It was about two weeks ago. Okay. Because we the jet boat season on the Willamette is officially the the commercial season for that travel is over, but we have talked to the operator, and we are potentially lining that up. We don't know what it's going to cost yet because those things do are pretty expensive to charter them. But we're going to look into that further. We we it looks like they have an opening on October 11th, which is your next commission meeting. We we also have um, is Urban Renewal isn't that night though. It's a work session. And what time do we have that scheduled? generally at 5.30. Okay, so if we wanted to do the boat tour, we could do that at 3.30 and come to our meeting, assuming any of you could get here. So you might see what you can do about the 11th on the afternoon. As soon as we can pin this down more firmly, particularly the cost, we will let you know. Um, also, I'm not sure how, I think those boats hold almost 20 people. So there may be, depending on the weather and so forth, there may be an opportunity to have s someone from Metro join us, maybe someone from the county who are also in our burgeoning partnership on this project. That's great. Um, is, um, is this the one that goes out of Milwaukee? The boat? Uh-huh. You know Nancy? Out of from OMSI. OMSI, by OMSI. Okay, because I, I saw them pull one out yesterday, pulling it out of the water to yeah. They're, they're very significant boats. And, and, you know, I talked about, I think one of you, I mentioned, well, would you like to wait till, till spring? The water flows are higher. Uh, but it's, there's quite a bit of water coming through the chute right now down there. And it's, uh, if Jim, you were there just two weeks ago, I think flows were even lower then because that's before we had had any rain. Mm -hmm. And I think you'll get a much different perspective on the site than the one that you've had from going on the top. So I believe that's all I have. Unless, oh. One other thing, uh, I, we have made an offer on my executive assistant position, and um, I'm waiting for the letter to come back, both the letter that went out and the one to come back, but we have a verbal confirmation, and I'll be getting something to you in the next day or two about the assistant, and I'll be happy. I'm looking forward to bringing them to the first council meeting to introduce that person to you. And um, we well, also let's talk about the process you used at one point. Uh, for that for that particular position, yeah, yeah we had 101 applications. Um, the human resources director went through the initial 
large group of applications to net winnow those down to the ones that actually had the published qualifications that we were asking for, and that got the list down to eleven. Well, that wasn't eleven the well, first round. No, the first round was twenty. It was about twenty because that's a stack that I got was twenty. <laughs> uh, and then Nancy Ide and I actually work closest with this person on a daily basis, so she and I sort of step step back from the process other than screening those initial twenty. We got those 20 down to 10, and then the executive team, absent Nancy and I, uh, did face-to-face -face interviews, and I think there was even a uh, Skype interview or something from somebody who was a faraway place or couldn't get in. And so they, they did those interviews, and they narrowed it down to three people that they gave, gave us, and it was a very difficult. I mean, literally, like, trying to figure out which one of your kids you love the most as far as trying to f – they were all so well qualified. I was very, very happy with – with the results, and I think uh, the person that we've chosen is going to work seamlessly in the organization, and I'm very optimistic about how they're going to work with you as well. So um, we'll be making the announcement probably pretty in the next day or two. If if we can, we're going to put together a press release with a photograph, and I, I will send that to you in advance of it going to the newspaper. Oh, I think that's awesome. So yeah, yeah, that's great. Yeah, we're really pleased, and we we are also changing the the structure in our office right now was was one that I sort of inherited, and I, I think it could, could be more effective by giving the assistant city recorder a bit more responsibility and cross-training these two individuals that work so closely in our office. Because uh, right now, when one, of us go, when one of them is gone, it can really put a, put a glitch in our operation. So we're, that's what we're going to do. We're going to make their pay more parity, and then we're going to divide their responsibilities and cross-train them. Right. And so I think that is a win-win for even for the staff that are already here because it gives them more responsibility and more opportunity for professional growth. Mm -hmm. uh, I also think that that model puts us in good stead for the future in, in the event that we do need to grow our staff. We have a model now that can grow with it. Uh, before, we didn't really have that. Mm -hmm. So um, anyway, I look forward to in the next – that will probably be before the end of the week that I'll have something uh, – with details for you, names, dates, a little more background on the individual. That's four hours from now, David. Oh. Mm -hmm. Yeah, <laughs> four hours from now. By the end of the week, okay. yeah. Thank you. That's well, Mayor's report. Um, I think the first thing I'll mention, the fact is that the Oregon City Optimus had a breakfast prior to the football. Uh, Don't even talk about state. it. Well, I, I really, I really tried to pep the football <laughs> team up, and we, we still, in terms of the whole, I mean, what's uh, almost a hundred years of, of competition. We have the oldest competition in the state between two high schools, between Westland and Oregon City. Mm -hmm. We're still ahead in that game, <laughs> but when I went to when I went to the Optimus uh, bre Optimus breakfast, uh, we're faced with the fact that we had a a a series of eight losses in a row. And I, w I wanted to pep them up, and I pointed out the reason that probably happened is because Oregon City had a woman mayor over those eight years, <laughs> and it no longer had a woman mayor. And uh, uh, then so I we thought. <laughs> 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 but uh, oh, but that the only thing, well, you. no, there's uh, no, no, and I, I mentioned it at the time. There, there, there was this problem though that both uh, West Lynn's mayor was there too. That. Um, uh, he, uh, he, he, he had a military background, and I was just a Peace Corps wimp. So I don't know if that had effect on this next game, <laughs> the game we this last game we lost or not. I also pointed out the story that I had heard that all the pioneers brought goats with them when they came over, and they put the goats on Goat Island. And all the Western Lynn Lions came over and ate all those goats. So I could try to excite the football team in terms of, of, of having lost all those goats back in the, in, in the days of the wagon trains. And uh, that didn't seem to work either. So I, I think ne next time I'll have to con confer with the commission as a whole what, 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 what i got to say to what the really strategy yeah, what be. the strategy's got to be. I'll say one thing is you should wear a red shirt. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, the mayor of West Lynn showed up with a red sweater, and and uh, you showed up in, I won't say green, but closer to green than red. <laughs> <laughs> you better get the right color. Yeah, on. that's true. Uh, incidentally, uh, there were other things that happened too. I mentioned the, uh, 
I mentioned that October 2nd, uh, the uh, Newport had uh, had its uh, celebration of its 75th anniversary of the uh, of the Condi uh, McCulloch Bridge uh, over over Yakina Bay, and uh, they had about a thousand people show up on their march there. So it was a, it was a really big event. Uh, I indicated to the mayor of uh, of Newport that we would be sure to invite him uh, to to our grand opening as well next year, and that we would invite him 12 years after that to our centennial celebration, and that uh, we could we can send somebody 12 years after that to their hundredth anniversary. So uh, that was that was a nice trip. It was just a day trip for me, but it uh, they had a very very good program, and I really enjoyed it. The only trouble was that. Um, uh, I, I, they had a shuttle operating. They had actually a march across the bridge, and I participated in that march across the bridge. They closed off one lane of traffic, so the cars all slowly followed about a thousand people across the bridge. <laughs> and they had a shuttle to take people back, but that that shuttle was immediately after the march, and they weren't didn't extend it any further than that. So I stuck around a couple hours, and I was able to. He had invited me to speak, and I spoke a bit. And uh, the shuttle wasn't operating, it was starting to rain, and at the point I got about a third of the way, it was a huge, about a 40 mile per hour gale. <laughs> it ripped my umbrella to pieces, and I was absolutely <laughs> soaked. But uh, uh, other than that, it was an extremely good <laughs> event, and I did. Um, uh, I, I assume people are probably going to talk about the meeting that they, they went to, so I think I just shipped to the commissioner's report. Okay. And anybody that wants to speak to okay. any of the events, the the uh, conference, I agree with David. It was it was excellent. I really picked up a lot of um, of wonderful um, ideas there, and one of them is that I would like to ask for a quarterly update. And I know you try to do this more often than quarterly, but a formal quarterly update on our goal process, where we are in our goal process, uh, to keep keep us all on track, maybe a little bit more. Um, Met a lot of really nice people. Have wonderful food. Tillamook. Yes. Oh my goodness. Oh yes. Oh yes. <laughs> Tillamook did the yeah, best. They I did. Think next year we should do it. I think room. so too. But I don't know what would we serve. I don't know. We'll have to talk to the staff. They can give us ideas. Yeah. But it it was a very good conference. I appreciate being able to go. Barbecued sea lion. <laughs> <laughs> Eels. Oh, Eels. The one eel that we got. <laughs> Thank you. Better be specific whether it's Stellar's or California. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so anybody, any of the other commissioners? Well, Jim, do you want to go next? I'll go next. It was a great conference, and just so you guys know what we're talking about, um, after the um, conference closed, like at four or five in the evening, um, different cities um, had. Um, Social, what did they call it? Hospitality rooms. Hospitality rooms. So they brought in, Tillamook brought in cheese and um, smoked salmon and oysters and all that kind of goofy kind of stuff. And uh, Wilsonville's was wines and um, some really good, good food and beverage from the different cities to show off kind of what their cities promote, you know, produced or, you know, something like that. I don't know if Oregon City, I'm sure we could come up with something. I know you guys, um, staff knows everything about Oregon City, but um, great um, conference, um, very well attended. Um, one thing I did learn was um, I went to the swimming pool one, and I really think that um, our staff does a great job with all of the lean um, stuff for the pool, and I thank you for that, Scott. Um, the one thing that I think this commission is going to have to deal with is a um, fund for the maintenance of that swimming pool because we don't have like a, a line item in the budget, I don't think, or anything for maintenance. And they said that the older the pools get, the more expensive they are. So that's something that the next budget committee we're going to have to kind of look at, how to do maintenance on that. I'm, I don't know. So, anyways, that was a good one. Um, I attended a, um, how to deal with angry people in the audience um, when they come. Great YouTube um, uh, videos that they showed. If you go on YouTube, you can apparently see all these 
great um, obnoxious citizens that go before different commissions. And or commissioners that get hauled out. And commissioners that get hauled out, yes. Um, so great tips. Um, uh, they talked a lot about body language and, you know, kind of how to defuse things. And I'm sure our police chief knows all about that. <laughs> <laughs> well, if he, if, he comes, if he becomes involved, we have diffused some <laughs> <laughs> And then Saturday was a great um, keynote speaker who talked on um, how to get your commission to stop clashing and start clicking. Great, um, great talk um, there. Um, so the other thing was, and I don't know if the mayor wants to speak to this, I went to a meeting on aging people in Oregon City. So I just, this was my first meeting with this, and I know that you've been more involved, but apparently Oregon City's baby boomers are going to be, uh, come older and older, and we need to be thinking about what, how we're going to attract and keep our citizens in their houses. This is a. I know. I'm speaking for myself. <laughs> well, it's, it, actually, it was a um, it was a joint activity between um, the county and the state, uh, where they were having us take a look at our community, take photographs indi indicating uh, in our neighborhoods uh, where where there are challenges to the aging community, and then also where where we have things in place that are beneficial to the aging community. Um, I think it was a nice. I, I mean, I think it was a nice process to go through. Uh, but when we looked at all the cracked sidewalks, the steep slopes, and um, some of our some of the buildings uh, that actually house people that are uh, are challenged either or age wise or otherwise that are not necessarily in the best of conditions. Um, fact is that I think the kinds of improvements we would talk about require money and that's going to be I think much much harder to to get a hold of um, and I guess it's a case of, of finding out what what we can do in the affordable housing area we really haven't we really haven't done much in that area at all uh, and uh, of course, we have the public housing that the county that the county owns and manages. But um, there are plans, of course, to build more facilities there. That that they made the submission for a grant. Generally, you don't get it on the first try, and and you out and and if you have a good proposal, which the county felt they did, they get it on the second try. But those monies no longer exist. So I think it's going to be very very challenging in terms of how we are going to be able to provide for people that are uh, older than me. Uh, anyway, <laughs> uh, <laughs> the, uh, uh, it, it was it, it was interesting. Uh, well, one thing, and I think I think this has been mentioned before, but one thing that our, our uh, Pioneer Community Center does, of course, it it runs its Meals and Wheels program and it provides those services. Uh, West Lynn uh, pays for it, but it also provides those services for West Lynn and some areas outside the city as well. Uh, what they do is not only include meals for the people, but they also include some meals for the pets because pets are very important to people that are alone and aging, and uh, there's a tendency of people to give that food for their pets, and so they've, they've, they've included actually uh, food for the pets, so the the people eat the people food and so forth. And I think I think that was great. Um, but yeah, it was a, it, it it was a, it was a series of a total of uh, three uh, three meetings. Uh, the last one was just this last week. Anybody else? Oh, the Kanima. Oh Park. yes, Scott. <laughs> I assume you're talking about our playground building. Our playground yes. building. Yeah. Um, yeah, thanks. That was uh, that's uh, nice to be able to talk about that. Uh, two weekends ago, we held our volunteer playground build for the Kanima Neighborhood Park that's uh, in under construction, as you all know. And um, we had a great weekend. It was a not a large group of people, but a very dedicated group. Uh, the folks that, that turned out um, worked extremely hard. Um, we actually built 
sort of two playgrounds. They're side by side. There's a, a smaller child's and an older child's playground. And um, it was a substantial project, and it was built over the course of, of two work days. And some of the commission uh, members were there and uh, neighborhood I built a members. Slide. What's that? I built a slide. <laughs> Did you carve your initials in it for <laughs> prosperity or something? Um, we had, I was just kidding. I know you <laughs> I hear gas. I was just kidding. Um, yeah, we had a, it was a, a really uh, great project. The, the first day was, was very hot, and the second day was pouring rain. So we had the extremes in weather, and, and we worked through it, and uh, so you can see the results. The, if you went by the park, you'd, you'd kind of look at it and think it, it doesn't look quite finished yet, and that's because it's it's not. There's still the, the wood chips have to be put in, the, the safety fall material, and you know if you and the park itself isn't done, so it sort of looks incomplete. But the playground, the the structure is completely built, so that yeah, was great. great. Thanks, Commissioner, for reminding me to um, talk about that. I was able to make the second day, and uh, I want to. You, I know you were there the day before, but I want to uh, commend uh, <coughs> Denise Kai. Oh yes, uh, she uh, she did a great job. She understood the construction very well. Yes, she does. And uh, she uh, she acted as a semi straw boss there, but she was extremely good. And, Thank you. And I know I know I know you know she she does so many things in your department mm -hmm. that I don't think people recognize, and I've heard. Uh, many staff uh, comment on on how tremendous of an asset she is, mm -hmm. and if you could pass that on would, to her, I would be glad to do that. I appreciate you uh, saying that. Yeah, I completely agree with you. And, uh, <laughs> I heard, actually heard that from a number of people uh, over the weekend. Yeah, so thank you. Mm -hmm. Any other comments, Mayor Neely? Could yes. I just put in one another plug for our um, landslide preparedness public community forum? It's next. A week from tomorrow night, October 13th, from 7 to 9 p.m. at Oregon City High School, Jackson Campus Auditorium. And we will have be giving away four free emergency preparedness kits. We will um, also have cookies and apple cider. And this is especially recommended because many of the neighborhood associations and even folks outside the city in um, have been requesting that Bill Burns come and speak about the LIDAR mapping. Mm -hmm. So he's going to be there making oh, a presentation. Nice. We will also have an engineering a geotechnical consultant providing um, case studies from landslides that that individual has worked on. And we'll also have ODOT there talking about ODOT landslides and rockfalls. And uh, they'll probably talk a little bit about some of the rockfall on 99E and talking about well, how we can prepare to avoid these kinds of situations. And I think it's going to be, um, we'll also have someone from the planning department talking about our codes. So we're um, wanting to get the word out. There's been a lot of press on it, and we've got a lot of flyers out, a lot of email, a lot of website. But you guys, I'm looking forward to seeing you there. And um, just <coughs> wanting to get the word out one more time. Please great. come. It should be a great presentation. Yes. Is, is this, I'm, I'm probably mixing up with something. Is this part of a two two session? Thing? Yes. And yes. later on, could you November. just take a moment yes. and describe what the second one? In November, the second Thursday in November, and this is the second Thursday in October, um, we will have the earthquake preparedness right. and general overall emergency preparedness covered at that meeting as well. Where and the sponsors on both events are the Oregon City School District, um, Oregon City Public Works, Clackamas Fire. <laughs> Three of us are working together. Oh, the most important sponsor. What? <laughs> they don't have a logo yet. We're working to get them a logo. Is the um, he's not here anymore? William Gifford, uh, the Citizen Involvement Council. They're um, really the the folks that have been doing the bulk of the organization. So, great well, group to work with. I'll just let you know. Um, uh, I think the mayor and I probably will not be there because we have a South Fork meeting. Oh, yes. South Fork Water Board meeting that night. Um, me too. Oh, and Rocky. <laughs> I'm yes. on that board too. Well, you if know. you get out early, come on over. Okay, thank you. Okay, thanks. Um, you you were mentioning slides and so forth, and I began thinking of Newell Creek Canyon. I wanted to credit somebody else, not on staff, but I think his name's Brian Bond with Metro. Is it Brian first? His first name's Brian. I believe. Yeah, the scientist for Metro. Yes, he's been he he does the work with the southeastern part of the uh, open spaces. 
uh, he, he gave a nice tour of the Kanema area uh, that Metro has uh, procured. But he's been very active in working with various organizations here, and I think he's actually worked with Public Works a little bit and, and maybe Parks in terms of describing how some of the invasive species could be controlled. I think he sent, uh, sent prescriptions as to how to deal with some of those things. Uh, He's fairly new, but I I don't I don't think we've had that level of personal uh, contact that has emanated from his presence there. So I wanted to specifically recognize recognize him. Yeah, um, Mayor, I, if I can comment, I we um, we worked pretty pretty closely with with Brian and well with a whole whole bunch of the different uh, staff for Metro on, on a variety of things, but because of the um, the partnership with Kanema Neighborhood Park and the course the Kanema Bluffs property adjacent and, and we did some um, we did some arrangements with the property actually we're building the park on a large chunk of what is actually Metro owned but we're leasing it for a, a long time or an easement um, but yeah Brian's been great to work with and, and, and a number of other staff as well and since you brought that up I think it might just be good to uh, make mention of with the development of our neighborhood park and and Brian, what Brian, one of the things that Brian has been specifically working on for Metro is um, the how the, the development of our of our neighborhood park is going to increase the accessibility to the trail system within within the Metro properties adjacent. And they're working on uh, the 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 tour or the the uh, meeting that you just mentioned, Mayor. Was part of that was about. Um, just the community um, kind of helping them develop this um, enhanced system of, of how the trails network is going to work and actually as part of our project there's going to be some uh, some signage so our our new pathways within the park will sort of lead to the boundary where the metro property begins and then uh, there'll be some mapping and and some different ways of um, letting people access that system of it's basically going to open up that Kanema natural property uh, to, to folks that probably um, would otherwise may may or may not know, have known it was there or it was just not as visible and not as easy to understand how to access it and it's going to be much more much more visible you can actually get a pretty good sense of that right now if you're at the uh, the park site even though it's under construction you can just see how the how it's all kind of opened up a little bit better and that I think is a great improvement so great. Before uh, before before I close, should have been part of the mayor's report. Uh, we do have two openings on the budget committee. However, um, we're going to actually have interviews for those. There's one vacancy on the planning commission, one for Clackamas Cable Access Board. Uh, I think given uh, 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 actually Commissioner Mum came up to me and given the. Uh, Given the the situation there, I think I'm going to appoint one of the members of the commission, and I'll give some thought to serve on the cable access board. Uh, and so, if there's somebody that has specific interest in that, let me know. Then we've got a series of uh, we, uh, we we have a series of uh, openings that are coming up that uh, that open up in January with the ending of of other people's uh, terms. Uh, even if a person wants to re up. They have to go through the the formal application, and I'll be requesting uh, I'll be requesting those boards again to actually have interviews of the candidates. But the library board has to parks and recreation advisory committee three, transportation advisory committee three, urban renewal commission uh, one, uh, urban renewal budget committee four, natural resource committee three. Uh, Oregon City Civic Improvement Trust one Metro Enhancement Committee one we are we are interviewing for the latter two actually in October these are positions that are currently actually not filled but uh, the reason there's so many here is because uh, it's a term ending for at the end of the year and uh, uh, we hope to have uh, strong responses uh, anything else for the good of the order well I want to sure I wanted to be sure to protract this out. We got a late start. It was 10 after 7, I think, when we started. I don't want anybody to accuse us to having a meeting less than one hour. <laughs> 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 oh, do we have